I don't think that entertainment has to be substantive, but I think it boils down to each artist's integrity, their own personal integrity. And that's why I love comedy in general. I mean, I think there's so many great minds in comedy because they're smart, they think about things all day, they're articulate, and when they find that unique angle, that's an opportunity to, for your mind to kind of go You must tell the truth as you see it, share the truth whenever you can, and be open to the fact that you might be wrong. You should always be able to make fun of ideas, and these beliefs are ideas. Um, a lot of people don't know the difference between themselves and their ideas. I think it's absolutely okay to ridicule individual beliefs. I think it's imperative for a movement to, you know, bring things that are ridiculous out into the public. Anyone who's provoking people and, and, and you know, and preferably doing it in an enjoyable way is someone I, I uh, admire. This is the kind of thing that we need to have now, somebody that is no-nonsense. That used to mean something. I'm a no-nonsense kind of guy. I like asking the questions that expose the holes. I like asking the questions that force the, the, the other person to think about things rather than to say, here's the answer. And uh, I think comedy that does that is the most compelling and the most interesting. And I think that's what Ian does. Ladies and gentlemen, Ian Harris. What's up, Santa Cruz? How you guys doing? Mm, oh, man. So, uh, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. That's a phrase I like to say a lot. I live my life by that. My comedy's about that. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. What does that mean? That means if you have an extraordinary claim, like, I'm psychic and I can see the future, you better back that shit up with some extraordinary evidence. I better see multiple times, like under scientific scrutiny, that you've actually done that, predicted something, and it's come true. And you can't say some shit like, in the future, I see Justin Bieber giving BJs for crack money or something like that. <laughs> because we all see that coming, okay? That's not, <laughs> you're not a psychic. And I'm still a non-believer um, at that point. <laughs> I love that phrase. The only thing I don't like about the phrase extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence is the word extraordinary, because it means amazing. It means incredible extraordinary but when i break down the word to me it sounds like an insult extra ordinary <laughs> hey man you're extraordinary <laughs> well you're super fucking boring so how about that uh, what do you... <laughs> and one day i realized that all those words mean that right all the words that we use for greatness actually mean the exact opposite incredible right incredible means not credible <laughs> It means your story lacks validity, motherfucker. That's what it means. <laughs> How about unbelievable? People always say, oh, this is place is unbelievable. You guys are unbelievable. Whoa, look at that girl. She is unbelievable. You're like, yeah, don't believe her. She fucked my friend Travis. Do not. <laughs> She's a liar. Don't believe her. I'm just, I'm just saying, if anybody ever says you're incredibly, unbelievably extraordinary, just punch that guy in the dick, okay? Because he <laughs> insulted you three times. I actually like the phrase extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence too. Because to, that, that that, to me that sounds like if Homer Simpson was doing science. You know what I mean? Like, my hypothetical jigger is that donuts are delicious. <laughs> <laughs> delicious. <laughs> Ooh, control group. <laughs> <laughs> Equally delicious. <laughs> the data never lies. <laughs> My daughter has the same thing I have, which is like, I can't let shit lie. You know what I mean? Like, I can't walk away from an argument. And I don't know if that's because I'm a skeptic or what, but it's like, I have this thing where I can't, if you say something factually inaccurate, I physically can't walk away. Anybody else like that, by the way, like me? Like, you just can't walk away from shit, yes? Yeah, because you're probably a skeptic too. Or maybe an asshole, that's what I think. Because um, that's what I get called a lot. Anybody else? Uh, no, no, but my, da my daughter does the same thing. Like, like when, when she was six years old, I picked her up from school. And we have this rule at my house that there's no such thing as bad words, only bad intentions. I've been saying that since she was born. There's no such thing as bad words. You can say whatever you want. Only bad intentions. 
And I know she got it and she figured it all out because when she was six, I picked her up from school and she goes, hey, dad, is crap a bad word? And she goes, I know there's no such thing as bad words, but do people think that crap is a bad word? I'm like, I don't, I don't know. Why do you ask? She goes, well, uh, none of the kids in my school think poop is a bad word. Half the kids in my school think crap is a bad word, but all the kids in my school think shit is a bad word. She goes, but they kind of mean the same shit. And I'm like, that's the shit I'm talking about. She's like, yeah, that's pretty fucked up shit. I'm like, fucking A. That story sounds unbelievable, I know, but uh, she's pretty extraordinary, that kid. Um, people, I think I'm like a magnet for it too. Like I'm a magnet for stupid shit. People say stupid shit to me all the time. Like the other day my friend comes up and he goes, hey man, check it out, dude. I'm about to be a father. I was like, oh man, congratulations. He goes, whoa, 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 hold up. It was an accident. I'm like, well, you know what? Sometimes condoms break. He goes, no, no, I wasn't wearing a condom. I'm like, okay, well, you know, the, the pill is what, 98% effective? I guess you were part of that 2% that slipped through the crack. No pun intended. Um, and, and he goes, no, 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 she wasn't on the pill. I'm like, dude, this day and age and you're still using the rhythm method? Are you fucking crazy? And he goes, the what method? I'm like, all right, why don't you tell me what happened, okay? And he goes, well, this is the deal. So my girl and I hadn't been out in a long time. So we went out to dinner and we had like a bottle of wine. We got a little tipsy and we ended up going to a bar and we were drinking all night. We got pretty messed up. We ended up going to a dance club. We were out till like four in the morning. We were drinking, we were partying, we were dancing, having a good time. We went back to my house, we had sex and I guess I didn't pull out quick enough. I'm like, man, your accidental pregnancy sounds identical to my wife and I's intended pregnancy. <laughs> like if I hear accidental pregnancy, I'm expecting a story. How did this accidental pregnancy occur? Well, I was masturbating on the sidewalk. Um, <laughs> like I do every Sunday and uh, my girl was upstairs and she was taking a shower and she got robbed at gunpoint of all of her clothes. So she chased the assailant down the street, all wet and soapy and naked and slippery. And as she ran past me, she slipped and did a backflip, landed right on my junk, right as I ejaculated, I'm going to be a father. <laughs> I'd be like, damn, that's an accidental pregnancy. <laughs> but if I ask how this accidental pregnancy occurred and your response is, well, we got drunk and did it. <laughs> I'm like, uh, this word accident? I do not think it means what you think it means, okay? Uh, <laughs> but you realize that penis plus vagina equals baby, right? Like, like that's, that's the mathematical formula for a baby. If you had a Betty Crocker cookbook on how to make a baby, it would say one part penis, one part vagina, mix well. <laughs> Alcohol to taste, right? That's what it would say. <laughs> like you might as well have said to me, hey man, last night, I accidentally baked a cake. <laughs> well, how'd that happen? Well, I was pissed drunk and uh, I walked in my house, I set my keys down, I went over and I accidentally preheated the oven to 400 degrees. <laughs> and I got a bowl from the pantry, I put it up on the, on the counter and I got out some eggs and some flour and some milk and some sugar and some, you know, some water, some vanilla for taste, of course. And then I, I mixed that all up. I blended till smooth, as they like to say, and then I accidentally dumped that into a greased pan, and uh, I put that greased pan into the oven. And 45 minutes later, <laughs> now you're not gonna believe this, uh, there was a fucking cake in there. You'd be like, oh my God, what kind of cake was it? I don't know, told you it was an accident. Can I have some of it? No. I accidentally ate it. If I accidentally gained weight, I'm gonna be purposely pissed. Like I'm just saying, you can't show up to like daytime television with that story, can you? You couldn't show up to like Maury Povich. Look, Maury, that ain't my goddamn cake. I don't know how to bake no goddamn cake. I don't have no recipe for no goddamn cake. And I ain't never even made cookies, Maury, and that ain't my goddamn cake. Because more poet would be like, well, we've got the results right here. <laughs> Ian Harris, you, 
are the baker of this cake. Oh, bullshit, Maury! That cake don't even look like me! It's got fucking chocolate frosting on it. This is bullshit. Sometimes friend, people poke holes in my shit. I gotta, for years, I thought I had bad luck. I really believed in bad luck. I thought I had bad luck because I thought I'm poor. I grew up poor. Shit's just not gonna work out for me ever. I have bad luck. And then one day my friend points out to me, he goes, no dude, you don't have bad luck. You make shitty decisions. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you got a point. But then I found it's a little bit of both. I, I, I have bad luck and I make shitty decisions. And I found this out in one fell swoop. I'm sitting at a Chinese restaurant. I get my fortune cookie. All the fortune, everyone else, everyone in here gets cool fortunes. No one here has had a bad fortune, I guarantee you. I have had a shitty fortune. I got a fortune cookie, I swear to you, on my life. I opened it up and it said, do not trust your own judgment. <laughs> I'm like, that is bullshit. So I demand another cookie. I'm like, bring me another cookie. And I opened it up and it was like, no, really. I'm like, oh shit, <laughs> this dessert has a point. <laughs> I shall heed its warning. Yeah, you gotta poke holes and stuff, man. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. That's what I say. And like, like people come to me too all the time and they say weird stuff. Like my friend came up to me the other day. He goes, hey man, tell you what, dude, here's my advice for life, bro. Live every day like it's your last, man. Is that a good idea? To live every day like it was your last? If you were to poll a group of friends to find out what they would do if it was their last day on earth, I have, and the answers are frightening. <laughs> hey man, last day on earth, what do you do? Heroin? I'm like, no, no, no. Uh... Goes, oh, like jump out of an airplane with no parachute. I'm like, no, 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 I meant like uh, something awe-inspiring and uplifting, and he's like, oh, like go to Brazil and nail hookers. I'm like, you're not getting this. Uh... <laughs> All I'm saying is this, if we lived every day like it was our last, we'd all be walking around like a bunch of drug-addicted, STD-infested daredevils, okay? <laughs> I'll be like, evil can evil with gonorrhea, you know what I'm saying? Like, if we, if, we, if we lived every day like it was our last, it would be about two weeks before one of those days was our last, okay? <laughs> we have a name for people who live every day like it was their last. That name is Charlie Sheen. Uh, <laughs> Charlie lives every day like it's his last, I'm telling you. By the way, you think when Charlie finally dies, uh, you think someone's gonna be like, hey man, Charlie died doing what he loved. <laughs> Drugs and hookers, <laughs> right? Because let's face it, that's how Charlie's going. Uh, and that's what Charlie loved. Uh, that's another one I always gotta call bullshit on. When people say that, guy died doing what he loved. He died doing what he loved. Because they never mean that. They're never like, dude, he OD'd on heroin. At least he died doing what he loved. <laughs> he loved heroin, right? No, they never mean that. They always mean some like, like, like extreme sport. It's always big wave surfing, right? It's always like rock climbing. It's like, dude, you hear about Bob? He died, man. He was surfing 50-foot Mavericks, dude. He bailed. He never came up. But he died doing what he loved. And I'm always like, drowning? He loved drowning? <laughs> what a stupid thing to love. I'm just saying, how much you want to bet that's the day he lost the love for that sport? That's what I want to think. I would be willing to bet that's the exact fucking moment he lost the love for that sport. <laughs> Guy's up on a rock face, 3,000, oh man, I love rock climbing. It's the best thing in the world. 3,000 feet up, no ropes, man, I'm just chilling. Sun on my face, wind in my hair. Oh, oh, oh shit, no! Oh, why couldn't I have loved rollerblading? Right, it's positive that's how it goes every time. So I'm from here, from Santa Cruz, but I, I live in LA now, so um, between the two places, everyone I know is gluten-free, um, which is... <laughs> I got nothing against the gluten-free thing, man. I really don't. It's just that I'm, I'm tired of it. Like, like, the other day, I'm not even kidding you, I went into a store, like I was in a restaurant, and a bottle of water, it's like, bottle of water, $1, gluten-free. <laughs> if you don't know that there's no gluten in water, uh, you don't know what gluten is, and you shouldn't be on a gluten-free diet, okay? <laughs> I, lo I lost a friend. <laughs> In Santa Cruz, they're applauding over gluten-free. All right. Uh, I lost a friend over the gluten thing because, okay, poke, talk about poking holes. The guy who originally came up with the non-celiac gluten sensitivity thing, the guy who came up with that did another study and, and found his flaw in his study and, and took it all back, right? So I posted that 
on like a social media. And my friend went crazy, right? He got all angry at me and he like blocked me and unfriended me. And I was like, what the hell? So I called him up. I'm like, dude, what is the big deal? It's just gluten. Like, don't lose your shit over it, right? Um, and then I immediately realized that was the wrong euphemism to use for a guy with <laughs> gastrointestinal problems. Because <laughs> apparently he literally loses his shit over gluten. <laughs> or according to the study, that's what he thinks anyway. Um, I have no problem with it, man. Like, if, and, and I assume that if you're here, or, or you're, you're probably diagnosed with celiac disease by a, by a person who diagnoses such illnesses. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about my friends who were diagnosed with the gluten sensitivity by uh, the guy at their gym, or their psychic friend, or uh, usually themselves, right? I have this one friend, she's like, you know what, mister? You can be Mr. Cynic, you can be Mr. Skeptical, whatever, but I'll tell you something. I was about 30 pounds overweight. And my trainer, Sebastian, told me that I may have a gluten sensitivity and this could all be caused by inflammation. I'm like, inflammation? Is that what they're calling it nowadays? <laughs> I actually like a girl with a little inflammation in her trunk, but that's me. Uh... <laughs> she, goes, she goes, no, she goes, you know what? She goes, laugh all you want, but I cut out bread and pasta and I lost like 20 pounds. Like, whoa, wait a second. You mean to tell me that all you did was cut carbs out of your diet and you miraculously lost weight? Get out of my house. Those are the dark arts. I will not have them practiced here. She's like, ha ha, laugh all you want, but I'll tell you what, gluten isn't natural. Are you sure? She goes, you know what I mean, asshole. The cavemen didn't eat it. Did you know that? The cavemen didn't eat gluten. Is that our barometer for health these days, the caveman? <laughs> when I looked at somebody who really had their finger on the pulse of medical technology, who really understood nutritional science and had that whole longevity thing down pat, <laughs> the caveman, the first group I looked to, followed closely by that group of people you see on their rascal scooters at the Pizza Hut inside the Walmart, right? Getting some cheese stuffed breadsticks to tide them over while they wait in line for their copy of Make America Great Again. Like those are the, those, those are the two groups of people I look to for nutritional advice. The cavemen and the cavemen. Uh, Here's the thing, I don't even care if you're gluten-free. I just don't like all the gluten-free products because they're kind of wor they're worse for you than, than, than just eating gluten. Like nowadays they have like, like gluten-free cookies and gluten-free cake and gluten-free pizza and gluten-free beer. Look, if you feel like you, know, you have some health problems, maybe a little weight problem, and you feel the need to, to cut out all whole grains, but you can't stop with the Bud Light, Maybe your health issues have a little less to do with your gluten sensitivity and more to do with your alcoholism. Uh, <laughs> you want to lose weight and you can't cut out cookies, cakes, pizza, and beer? You don't need to be gluten-free. You need to be glutton-free, okay? <laughs> like, I know something that's gluten-free and totally great for weight loss. It's called cocaine but I didn't need to tell you about that because you're a health nut. So, uh... <laughs> yeah, so I, I, live, I live in California. I've been in California my whole life. And um, so that means that every car I'm behind is a Prius. Um, <laughs> I have a hybrid myself, by the way. I, I have nothing against the hybrids. I'm like, if, you're doing, if you got a hybrid, awesome. I'm, I'm stoked. Do it. Um, here's the thing. I live in L.A. now. So every Prius I'm behind, it's always driven by some hot little 20-something-year-old starlet. And at some point on the journey, she always throws her cigarette out the window. I'm like, you can't throw a lit cigarette out the window of a Prius. That's like me showing up to a Peter rally in leather boots and a fur coat, right? Like, <laughs> they gotta treat these animals better. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. So soft. <laughs> Got a hamburger? What? It's a gluten-free bun, dick. What's your problem? Don't throw your cigarette out the window. Like, think about that. You're throwing burning trash out of the window of your eco vehicle, all right? <laughs> I don't know some of you are like, hey, Ian, not everyone who buys a Prius considers themselves to be an environmentalist. Some people just want to pay way too much for an ugly car, and that's their prerogative. <laughs> and it is. 
I, I'll tell you what, though. I had to put myself in check because I, I, I bought a hybrid, man. And I looked at it. I looked at it. I'm like, I get 30, 40 miles to the gallon. And I spent like thirty or $40,000. And I'm like, you know what? I once had a 1994 Honda Civic that got that same MPG. You can pick up one of those nowadays for about 1500 bucks. <laughs> certified pre-owned. <laughs> and since I'm poking holes in shit, can we get rid of the certified pre-owned if there's any car people here? No, you're not fooling anybody. No one's like, wait a second. You mean to tell me that this 1994 Honda Civic is used? <laughs> and you're willing to guarantee that in writing? And only charge me more? <laughs> How do you stay in business, sir? I had to put myself in check. I realized next time I buy a car, I got two options. Certified pre-owned or certified pretentious. And uh, I think I made the wrong choice the first time. Just don't throw your cigarette. At the bare, bare minimum, don't throw it. If you throw your cigarette out the window of your Prius, from now on, I'm going to follow you to Starbucks. Because let's be honest, that's where you're going. Um, and I'm going to wait in line behind you, and at the right moment, I'm going to revoke your pretense privilege. Right? You're going to be like, hi, yes, I'd like a venti, uh, two-shot, half-calf, uh, skinny caramel macchiato, extra foam, double hot, and I'm going to be like, yoink, <laughs> she'll have a tall drip. And uh, <laughs> could you leave a little room for irony? That'd be fantastic. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't throw your cigarette out the window. I actually would have more respect for a guy driving a monster truck Hucking weapons grade plutonium and used Aquanet cans out the window, right? Like, woohoo! Fuck you, Al Gore! Yeah! YOLO, motherfucker! Because that guy's an asshole. But at least he's consistent, right? Uh, speaking of inconsistent assholes driving monster trucks, I was, uh, I was in traffic and I was behind like a suburban like one of those big, you know, suburban type trucks, and it had a, had a sticker on the back that said, chemtrails kill. And uh, I felt it should say, chemtrails kill, dot, 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 dude, but it didn't. Um, <laughs> but I'm like, wait a second. You're driving an 18 passenger, four gallon to the mile, urban assault vehicle on a road with millions of other cars, worried about water vapor that's happening at 35,000 feet. And let's be honest, it's water vapor, okay? That's what it is. And, and it's at 35,000 feet. Like, what, contrails have existed since the beginning of the jet engine. And it's at 35,000 feet. If it, 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 by the time it got here, it would be a part per gazillion. That's not going to do anything to you, right? But everyone in here knows at least one person, or maybe that person is hacky sacked up to you at a Target somewhere, right? <laughs> like, dude, no, hey, man, it's not fucking water vapor, bro. <laughs> Right? It's a government conspiracy, man. They're poisoning the water, dude. They're putting like some stuff in the jet fuel and then they spray us, man, and it gets down. It's a government conspiracy for mass mind control. I'm like, the government's doing this? You mean our government? You mean the United States government? You mean the same government that can't deliver my neighbor's mail to me on time? Is that the government we're talking about? The same government that they allowed the city of Flint, Michigan's water to have more lead in it than 50 cent? Is that the... <laughs> the water in Flint, Michigan has so much lead in it, Superman can't see through a glass of it, okay? <laughs> they let that slip through the cracks, yet somehow they've convinced the entire world's airlines and all the world's airlines employees that it's okay to poison their own groundwater in some sort of mass mind control experiment, right? And apparently, judging by like this guy and all the other chemtrail experts I've ever met, the only way to thwart off this mind control agent is to work part-time at Whole Foods and live in your mom's basement. Uh... <laughs> And that's when he's like, dude, they already got to you. <laughs> you know what, dude? You can keep your eyes closed with the rest of the sheeple, dude, but uh, my eyes are wide open, man. And I'm telling you right now, dude, it's a government conspiracy. They're drugging you. They're trying to keep us all pacified. Yeah. <laughs> That shit's real, bro. <laughs> Let's go hit this drum circle. All right. <laughs> Speaking of
Speaking of inconsistent assholes uh, <laughs> more, um, Republicans, if there's any here. Uh, <laughs> there might be one closeted one here in Santa Cruz, I don't know. 98% of the world's climate scientists agree that climate change is real. And the majority of it is man-made, man-caused. 98% of the experts in the world agree to that fact. However, the majority of Republicans in Congress do not buy it. They're not buying, no, no, no. They say the science isn't in. We've got to remain scientific. The science isn't in. Yes. Yet every year, record temperatures. Every year. We've had crazy weather patterns like never seen before. We have, the polar ice caps are pretty much gone. In the last two years, I think we've had like more F5 tornadoes go through Tornado Alley than any time in history. And that's not caused by climate change. No, 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 no. That's caused by gay people fucking. <laughs> that's, that's what they say. Just so you got the science correct on this one. Uh. But listen to that. If there's any gay people here, please listen to that language carefully. The Tornado Alley and the Bible Belt are the same place. So every time you have sex, God punishes a red state. So uh, get to fucking gay people, we got work to do. Seriously, we gotta get God angry. We gotta get God so pissed he like wipes out some polling stations in Tulsa or something, right? Get to fucking, come on. Do it up, have as much sex as you want, I don't care, like go have orgies, two, threesomes, whatever, take one for the team, that's what I say. Shit, take two for the team, I don't care. It's not... You know what I love about when tornadoes go through those places? They always like wipe out a whole like little city or like a trailer park, and they always leave one standing. Have you ever noticed that? There's always like one trailer standing, and they always find that guy and interview that guy, and this is every interview. He's like, oh man, it's crazy, man. A tornado came through here, took out all my neighbors, man. Killed all my neighbors. The ones that are alive have nothing left. It destroyed everything they own. It just, it just, just wiped and decimated everybody. Left me standing. God is good. <laughs> like, really? He sounds like a dick. Uh, and so do you. But then I realized that maybe that's what his plan was. Maybe he was up the night before like, dear Lord, I fucking hate my neighbors. Uh, <laughs> Especially that Bill, he's a, he's a real son of a bitch. Uh, I don't know if you heard, but I got a new dog and a 13th kid on the way. Uh, I need a bigger backyard, bigger front yard, bigger side yard, that would be all great. In fact, if you could just see to it that tonight a, a, a tornado could come through here and just wipe everyone out, decimate everyone and leave me standing, that would be fantastic, amen. <laughs> oh, P.S., you know gay people are fucking, right? Did you hear, did you hear about the gay people fucking? This is what I learned from this most recent election, uh, th is that Republicans will vote for anybody. Um, I'm convinced they would have voted for President Elmo as long as he pretended to love Jesus, didn't understand science, and promised to take away their health care. They'd fucking vote for him, right? <laughs> it's like, Elmo hates the Mexicans. They're go goddamn right, Elmo. You're goddamn right you do. Elmo's presidency is brought to you by the letter B for Benghazi. And build a wall. And bye bye, Muslims. Yeah. Actually, I take that back. Republicans would never vote for Elmo because he's not white and he talks like a queer. So, uh. <laughs> Trump was endorsed by Putin, North Korea, and two grand wizards of the KKK. David Duke was the first. David Duke endorsed him and he didn't denounce it. He accepted that endorsement, is that crazy? He accepted the endorsement of a grand wizard and I thought to myself, maybe Trump, he's kind of dumb, maybe he doesn't know what a grand wizard is. <laughs> maybe he was back in his office like, wait a second, are you telling me we got a fucking wizard in our corner? Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's amazing, it's amazing. No, no, they're gonna help us get the nerd vote. They love those wizards, <laughs> they love them. Which one is it, is it Gandalf? Is it Gandalf? That's great. As long as it's the white one, I'm okay with it. Uh, these wizards love me. <laughs> science denial though, man, like, I just don't get, like people, people deny science, like Republicans love to deny science. I mean, it's across the board, don't get me, there, there's people on the left that deny science too. I'm a science geek, I just, I don't understand it. Like, like people, like my friend always comes to me, he goes, hey man, do you believe in evolution? 
I'm like, that's an oddly posed question. Do I believe in the fact that is evolution by natural selection? That's like asking me if I believe in electricity, right? Like, hey man, do you believe in gravity? Because I don't. I believe that we're all held to the earth by God's cosmic super glue until the solvent of salvation raptures us to the heavens. But it made me think, has anybody else ever met anybody who denies any other form of academia? Anybody here ever met a math denier? You ever met in a conversation with someone, your friend's like, mathematics, come on. <laughs> you believe that? that? That don't add up. It don't add up, it's mathematics. <laughs> you believe it? Look, I ain't no mathematician. In fact, I ain't never taken no, what's it, trigonometry or whatever it's called, but uh, I can look right here and tell you, X ain't no goddamn number, okay? <laughs> That's, I ain't even a literary major, and I know X is the 38th letter of the alphabet, so uh, this is... <laughs> Look at this equation right here. It says X times sin. <laughs> the only person I know that can multiply your sin is the devil. All right, so you tell me whose work this is. I bet you think your, your, your mathematics is absolute, don't you? You think one plus one is two, and you think it's always going to be two. Yeah, not in God's world, pal. God is all-powerful. God can do whatever he wants. If God wants one plus one to be chicken pot pie, <laughs> guess what? One plus one is chicken pot 3.14159265535, approximately. That's kind of a silly joke. Uh, but, but it is the only joke I know of that takes pie to 10, so that's pretty good. <laughs> Speaking of people who, don't, who deny science, I, uh, I don't know if you guys saw this. There's a new, uh, uh, another uh, Catholic priest is in trouble. Um, yeah. This time it was an archbishop. Uh, archbishop got busted. He had 85,000 images and videos of underage children on his computer. 85,000. Yes. Now look, I've been on the internet pretty much since Al Gore invented it, okay? And... Um, <laughs> I can tell you this, I have never accidentally, not even once, stumbled upon a single piece of child pornography ever in 85,000? And then my friend points out to me, goes, dude, that's because you don't spend any time on the dark web. I didn't even know there was such a thing as the dark web. How is it that every 90-year-old priest has a login and a password? That's what I wanna know. <laughs> it's like, staff of God, 47, click. <laughs> password, kneel before me. Oh yeah! <laughs> I don't know, man, because when I talk to them, I talk to these guys, and every time I talk to them about, like, science or, or, or uh, technology, the age of the earth, right, they always act like they've never fucking heard of Google. You know what I mean? Like, you talk to them, they're like, computer? I don't know. what uh, Science? Never heard? The only book? All I need is the old, the old Bible. This is the only science book I use. Right? All my information comes from the Bible. I don't... Computer? Nah, this, all I need is the old Bible. Then when it comes to downloading a terabyte of kitty porn, suddenly they become Bill Gates, Edward Snowden, and Jared from Subway all rolled up into one <laughs> computer genius super pedophile, right? Last week, they didn't know what Wikipedia was. This week, they're hacking into the Nambla mainframe to find circa 1980s naked Gary Coleman pictures that the <laughs> authorities will later find on a desktop folder aptly titled Different Strokes. <laughs> a lot of writing went into that joke, by the way. Uh... <laughs> Priests that lost their mind, though. A priest in Italy got busted recently for, uh, for cocaine. Uh, he was the chaplain of the university, and he, he got busted. They busted this college party, and, uh, and the only guy to get busted was the priest because they caught him flushing his cocaine down the toilet. And I'm like, we've all heard of the King James Version of the Bible. Apparently, this guy adheres to the Rick James Version of the Bible, right? It's like, give it to me, Jesus. Give it to me, <laughs> Give me that stuff, that holy stuff. <laughs> Man. I did this, say hey, I'm an atheist. Um, 
I don't care what other people believe. I personally am an atheist. I, um, I got to do this really cool thing. Oh, thank you. A couple atheists. Awesome. Um, thank you. Yes. Good. Some atheists in the room. I assume you've all read the Bible, if you're atheist. If there's any Christians here, might I recommend it? Um, it's good work of fiction. Um, there's, like, great stuff in there. If you haven't read it, seriously, there's, like, like murder and rape and there's fucking unicorns. I'm not even kidding you. Uh, I mean, it's no Lord of the Rings. Don't get me wrong. It's good, though. Uh, would have been better if Tolkien had written one chapter, right? They could have thrown some psalms to J.K. Rowling or something. That would have been better. Uh, but it's all right. Give it a read. Um, no, I got to do this cool thing. I went to this thing called the Reason Rally. And uh, it's this, yeah, the second year they did it. Um, and, and it's like, it, it, it's 30,000 people at, at the Lincoln Memorial in, in Washington, D.C. And there's all these different speakers all day long. And, and it's all about atheism and reason. And I got to perform comedy in front of it. And before I left, my friend goes to me, he goes, hey, dude, you're going to the Reason Rally? Whoa. He's like, you, an atheist comedian performing atheist jokes? In front of 30,000 atheists? Dude, when you come back, you're going to be like a god in the atheist community. <laughs> like, dude, I already am like a god in the atheist community. None of them know I exist, and those that do don't give a shit about anything I have to say. So, uh, <laughs> mission accomplished. But I have read the Bible, and uh, that's why it always bugs me when people say God, when people refer to God as our, our, our heavenly father, right? You hear that a lot. God's our heavenly father. He's our father in heaven. God is our heavenly father. Because I've read the Bible, right? And it makes me think, like, what if God was our literal father? What if he was our actual, literal dad, right? Because if you ever read the Bible, you know some of the crazy shit you can't do. He's kind of a, he's kind of a jerk. Like, like, you can't cut the sides of your hair. Yeah, you can't eat pork. You can't eat shellfish. You can't, you can't do anything on a Saturday. You can't work. You can't answer a phone, right? You can't touch a woman or anything a woman has touched if she's on her period. And these things are punishable by death and to burn for all eternity in hell. Not time out. <laughs> Not lose your allowance for a week, young man. Eternal hellfire. I thought my dad was strict when he once beat me with a Lincoln log for fighting with my sister over the Barbie dream car, okay? He had nothing on this guy. If, if God was our real literal father, child protective services would be all over his ass. Am I right? Yes. And that's what I thought. Maybe that's what the devil is. Child protective services. It'd make a lot of sense. It'd explain why hell sucks so bad. It's an underfunded government program. Uh, can you imagine the devil down there like, look, I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry, it sucks. I get it. We're in the basement. Uh, it's hot. Maybe if we could get the goddamn 1% to pay some of their fucking fair share, we could put out some of these fires. Get an air conditioner down here. <laughs> look, Phil, I'd love to bring back casual Fridays. It's not in the budget, okay? <laughs> but I would love to see that custody battle. I would love to see the people versus God custody battle, right? Because you know it could be like some slick TV attorney. Mr. Yahweh. <laughs> Is it okay if I call you Yahweh? I know that you get testy about the way people refer to you. All right. Uh, I see you're represented here by the finest legal team money can buy, the law offices of Frankincense, Merstein, and Goldberg. <laughs> but I only have one question for you, sir. Is it not true that you sentenced your own son to death and to burn for all eternity in hell fire because he, and correct me if I'm wrong, shared a park bench with a woman? And God would be like, yes, that is true. Uh, but in my defense, she was unclean. You know, lady time, shark week, whatever the hell you guys want to call it, but uh, ugh. Sorry, ladies, gross. <laughs> As your God, can I go on record right now swearing an oath to myself on my book that that, I'm, that was not an intelligent design? I don't know what I did with that. I must have been drunk when I came up with the whole menstrual thing. Sorry, ladies. <laughs> Infinite punishments for finite crimes. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, it seems in his household, it's either Yahweh 
or the highway. <laughs> He's dismissed. Boom. I don't have a problem with, with if you're religious, man. That's cool. I, I just personally don't believe it, like the ideas. I don't have a problem with the people. The only people I don't like are if you go door to door. If you go door to door, you're a dick. That's not, and I think even Christians, most Christians, like, like you could be a devout Christian. If someone comes to your door, you're like, dude, get the fuck off my door, right? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and I realize why we don't like it. It has nothing to do with the religion. Here's why we don't like people going door to door, because it's our weekend. It's Saturday, it's Sunday, you're hanging out, you're watching a game, you're baking, you're barbecuing, you're on the couch in your underwear, whatever it is you like to do on your weekend, and they're there at your house to talk about their shit. <laughs> it wouldn't bother you if they were there to talk about your shit. If they knocked on your door and they're like, hey man, want to talk to you about the Niners season, you'd be like, fucking A, come on in, man. That's why we don't like door-to-door -door salesmen. It's the same thing. They're there for their purposes. Think about it. If they weren't selling you anything, would you have a problem with it? I don't think so. If someone knocked on your door and they're like, and you're like, hey man, can't you read? No soliciting. They're like, no, I'm not here to sell you anything. I just wanted to give you this vacuum cleaner. <laughs> You'd be like, wow, that's, this is my vacuum? I can have this? Yeah, that's your, wow. Thank you. That's incredible. Wow, my vacuum, thank you. I, you want to come in and talk about Jesus or something? Because we have time. Uh, <laughs> by the way, I came up with what I think would be the greatest job ever invented, okay? And if somebody wants, I'm not an entrepreneur. If somebody wants to take this and run with this and make a lot of money, just give me 10%, okay? Here, here's, here's my idea for the greatest job ever invented. Selling no soliciting signs door to door. <laughs> Boom. Huh? Think about that. Like, hey man, can't you read no soliciting? <laughs> That's why I'm here. <laughs> to sell you a bigger sign. Well, this is sure to keep douchebags like me away. <laughs> By the way, have you heard the good news? Free vacuum cleaner. I don't know. Oh. Yeah, I, 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 people, people say I'm mean to Christians a lot. Um, I don't know why. I think if you saw my first special, uh, Critical and Thinking, if you, if you see it, I do talk a lot about religion. I get why people say I'm mean to Christians. I don't mean to be. I, I'll be honest with you. I only talk about the ideas. I don't care about the people. I don't mean to be mean. And I will even say this. I will even apologize and say that, that if I've offended anybody, I will say that I believe that this world would be a much better place if more Christians were more Christ-like. Can we agree with that? Thank you. It would be a much better place if more Christians were more Christ-like. And by that, of course, I mean imaginary. But um, <laughs> that's just me. And maybe that's why people think I'm mean to Christians. I don't know. Uh, possible. Here's the thing. I have a lot of good Christian friends and family. I really do. And here's the thing. They all, they, I have like my friends and family that are Christians, they're good people. They're not like the kind of crazy people that want to keep you away from, from the bathroom or, or, or pass legislation and get in your bedroom. They're good people. They give to charity. They help people. Those kind of great people that you expect Christians to be. And they always want to come and support me, and I hate that. <laughs> no, because it's uncomfortable. Like, I got to look out in the audience, and I know that I'm going to say some shit. Because even though I love you, I don't necessarily love the shit you have to say, right? Like, I, I love the person. Don't like the ideas. Love the person. Don't like the ideas, right? So I know I'm going to offend them. And I just, I look out and I feel, I just, it's so awkward and I can't even describe what that's like when you, when you love somebody but you don't, you don't love their ideas and you still want to talk about it. It's just, and the only way I can describe it is like this. Imagine if you had a friend who was really racist, but he used his racism for good. <laughs> I know it's PC Santa Cruz, but go with me on this one just for a second. <laughs> I'm just saying that, like, imagine you haven't talked to this guy in a long time, and he calls you up. He's like, hey, man, how you doing? You're like, oh, how you doing? He's like, oh, it's great, man. Uh, yeah, I've been doing all kinds of stuff. I started this new charity. It's called the White Aryan Resistance Soup Kitchen. <laughs> we provide a warm meal and a comfortable night's sleep for inferior people who can't hold down a job proper. But if any of them have, a, have a substance abuse problems, we also provide the Ku Klux Klan Alcoholics Anonymous, the KKKAA. Uh, it's a 13-step program is what it is. Similar to your typical 12-step program, we just add one step. It's very simple. First thing, as always, you got to admit that there is a power 
greater than yourself, a higher power, if you will, then you have to give in. You have to give yourself. You have to succumb to this higher power. And then the third step is you just need to admit that this higher power is the white man. It's pretty simple. <laughs> it's simple. Some of you, I, I feel like I just uh, insulted the racists or something. I don't know. <laughs> Some of you are laughing. Some of you are like, Ur. I'm like, shit. All right. You guys are like, dude, you know, I was okay with you making fun of Christianity, but uh, now that you're making fun of racism, no. Uh, <laughs> this country was built on racism, sir, and I will not have it mocked. Uh, <laughs> it's okay to make fun of racism, folks. Uh, it's all right. But you know, like I say, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. I apply that daily. And it doesn't have to be about religion or, 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 or Bigfoot or some kind of other like thing, you know, some big grand question. It can be on daily shit. Like the other day, my friend says to me, she goes, she goes, um, uh, so do you let your kid watch TV? And I go, yeah, yeah, I let my, my kid watch TV. She goes, ah, oh, you should never let your kid watch TV. You should always tell your kid to read. Reading is always better than watching television. And I'm like, no, I, I have to call bullshit. Are you going to tell me that it's worse for my kid to watch a, a marathon of the cosmos on Netflix than it is to read a bunch of vampire romance novels? I call bullshit. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong, there's some shitty TV out there. And I know because I watch it all. I will watch anything. If I'm bored in a hotel room and I've got a book or one channel, I'm watching whatever's on that one channel. <laughs> I was in a hotel room the other night. I watched a TV show called Your Favorite Commercials from the Past Years. <laughs> Let that sink in for a second. I watched a television show about the things that you fast forward through while watching television shows. And I watched it out of spite. Because I was like, don't patronize me, right? Trying to, your corporate shit, you're trying to throw your corporate shit, making a TV show and sell me commercials on a TV show and then have commercials. I was like, this is bullshit. No one's got a favorite commercial. Turns out I was wrong. Uh, <laughs> I have a favorite commercial and I didn't even know it. 1980s Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. Two guys walking down the street and they run into each other and the guy's like, hey, you got your chocolate, my peanut butter. You got your peanut butter and my chocolate. And they're like, mmm, that's two great tastes that go great together. <laughs> I was like, all right, that's a good commercial. <laughs> but then I thought about, has anything else ever been invented by that methodology? <laughs> yes, crack. Because <laughs> think about it, at some point a drug dealer was walking down the street, now came a baker. And they were like, hey! <laughs> you got your cocaine, then my bacon soda. And you got your bacon soda and my motherfucking cocaine. <laughs> Let's smoke it. <laughs> crack, two great tastes that go great. Maybe crack, like crystal meth, Tina, whatever you want to call it. Cut to some trailer park, couple of rednecks hanging out. <laughs> hey! You got your nasal decongestion products in my bathtub full of gasoline. <laughs> Maybe organized religion. Pff, hey, you got your fear and guilt in my illogical contradictions. <laughs> religion. Two great tastes that oppress together. A lot of bad TV shows out there, man. The formula nowadays seems to be this. Every show is somebody I've never heard of teaching me how to do something I don't care to learn. <laughs> like every show I turn on, it's like, hi, I'm a fat guy and I like cars. I'm like, great. <laughs> the only thing I like more than cars is frosting my tips and barbecuing up some wieners. <laughs> and I'm going to show you how to do all three of those things every Tuesday night on my new show, American Carbecue Salon. You're like, what? <laughs> Tonight on American Carbecue Salon, this Buick needs a new transmission. I'm out of hair gel, and I'm going to show you how to blacken a burger on an exhaust manifold. <laughs> Speaking of blacken burgers, if you enjoy dark meat as much as my wife does, uh, <laughs> tune into our other show, Interracial Wife Swap, every Thursday night on the Family Channel. <laughs> okay. But being, a, being like, a, like a, a skeptic and a science guy, I, I hate... And loving TV, I hate when they merge the two, for the most part. Not always, like Cosmos was good, there was some good stuff out there. 
But I hate it when they do that, and because half the time they misrepresent science. Half the time it's not scientific at all, right? Like all those shows like Ancient Aliens, they pretend to be science, right? And I don't even understand that whole concept, the Ancient Aliens thing, right? Because here's what it is. For some reason, we have this idea as modern humans that anyone like, that lived 2,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago, that they're identical to us. They're, they're homo sapiens, the same brain, everything. They're, they're anatomically identical to us, but we have this idea that they were really stupid, right? So every time we find out that they do like normal mundane shit, we're always amazed by it, right? You know what I mean? Like, like, like when you find out that they observe the lunar cycle, there's always someone who's like, dude, did you know that the Mayans had a calendar? <laughs> what? A calendar? Dude. The Egyptians had pyramids. Get out of here. <laughs> there's, no way, that's there's no way they could have built that on their own. They must have had alien help. <laughs> yeah, that makes a lot of sense, right? Aliens came all this way. They learned how to traverse the galaxy, fly through wormholes and faster than the speed of light or whatever they need to do to get to our little planet to teach Egyptians how to build rock piles and store dead people, right? Like that... <laughs> Don't get me wrong, they're nice rock piles, okay? But think about that. That's like us finally inventing a time machine and then going back in time to teach the cavemen feng shui. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you're like, look, Hagar. <laughs> you need to put your bone piles over here and your shit piles over here. You never, you never want to sleep with your feet facing your dead relatives. That's just, that's just bad energy flow. You're welcome. Your friend's in the corner going, hey, man, don't you think we could teach them about, like, plumbing or something? And you're like, plumbing? Their feeble minds could never understand the need to pipe the shit out of their own living space. They wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't get it. We'll stick to feng shui. You know, the necessary stuff. I'm sure that's how it went down. I'm sure the aliens showed up to ancient Egypt. And they were like, ancient Egyptians! Oh, that goes back then, they would have just been Egyptians. <laughs> We've come all this way. Millions of light years through wormholes, and we've come to teach you how to stack rocks in a triangular formation. And the ancient Egyptians were like, oh. <laughs> Great. Uh, Thanks. Uh, no, don't get me wrong. I, I enjoyed preschool, too. Uh, uh, no, no, it's not that we don't appreciate. We're just thinking that maybe, I don't know, since you're here, you could teach us that whole fucking space travel thing. How about that? <laughs> could you teach us that? That's something we'd be interested in. They were like, no, no, slow down. Stack rocks first, okay? <laughs> if that goes well, we'll come back in a couple thousand years, teach you how to bake bread. If that goes well, then space travel. <laughs> baby steps, Khufu, baby steps. <laughs> By the way, have you thought about plumbing? Because it smells like shit in here. Uh, can I just say that? <laughs> I don't like scientific dramas either. CSI, Bones, SVU. You know why? Because the dialogue sucks. And I'll tell you why the dialogue sucks. Because in their effort to explain to us, the morons watching the show, the science... What they end up doing is explaining the science to everyone in the show. So it just comes off as really bad dialogue, right? Like every episode, it's two forensic detectives and they walk into a crime scene and this is every episode. <laughs> Looks like the murderer covered his tracks pretty good. Shampooed the carpets, painted the walls. This is luminol. It bonds to the proteins in blood. I'm going to spray this around the room. And though we can't see it with a naked eye, once I turn on this black light, the entire crime scene is going to become evident. I always want the other one to be like, yeah, I know, asshole. I'm your fucking partner, okay? Like, <laughs> you don't remember working with me for 20 years? You don't, you don't remember cheating off me in pathology in college? You don't remember that? How about you spare me the lecture on luminol, dick? How about that? 
And they're dumbing it down. I saw one. I shit you not. The guy goes into this crime scene. He picks us up. He goes, it's a 32 shell casing. You know, the assailant wasn't wearing gloves. He might have left his fingerprints on this. <laughs> if we send this back to the lab and it matches any known prints in our system, we've got our killer. <laughs> like, whoa, slow down, Columbo. Let me grab a pen. Okay. Are you trying to tell me that our fingers leave distinct prints? <laughs> All right. That sounds like voodoo, but uh, you're the expert. I'm just saying if we talk like that in our daily lives, dialogue would totally sound different. You're about, you're with your girl or whatever, you're about to have sex, right? You're like, look. I just need you to get naked. Get up on that bed. I'm going to put on one of these. It's known as a condom. It acts as a latex barrier between my sperm and your egg. I will put this condom over my penis, then I will insert my penis into your vagina. I'll move my hips back and forth in a rhythmic fashion. If I can do this for long enough, the right tempo should result in a euphoric sense for both of us. Eventually ending in what is known as an orgasm. Now granted, if I didn't have to wear this condom, that euphoric sense would be greatly heightened. <laughs> However, the impending orgasm may result in an accidental pregnancy. <laughs> you guys have been cool. Um, really cool, really cool coming home, man, really is. Thank you guys for supporting me, really appreciate it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you guys with this. Um, so like I said, I like to talk about science. Uh, here's the thing about science. Uh, here's the thing about America. Uh, for some reason, we're not getting the science out to the people. They just don't understand it, right? So I realized why. Um, because America, I'm watching this last election that we went through, and I, and I look like people respond to certain things. They respond to sound bites. They respond to like tits and ass and like sensationalism and, and race car, like just like guns, explosions. That's what we respond to as Americans. So I realized if we're gonna teach people science, we need to put it in that form, which would be like a summer blockbuster. So what I've done is here's my first pitch idea. I'm gonna pitch this. This is my summer blockbuster on climate change. Okay, so here we go. Summer blockbuster on climate change. This summer. The world is heating up, literally. <laughs> Starring Jason Statham and Dave Chappelle. Mr. President, do you have an idea what's gonna happen? If we don't get climate change and global warming under control, we are going to be fucked. <laughs> and when I say fucked, I mean, Proper fucked. <laughs> Damn, man! First black president, I gotta deal with all this bullshit. Three wars, the worst economy in recent US history, and now an environment that resembles a bad disaster movie. All President Clinton ever had to deal with was getting a BJ. Uh, that's what we call white people problems. <laughs> Talk about when keeping it real goes wrong. <clears throat> Starring John Malkovich as Bill O'Reilly. <laughs> you know, the liberals will tell you that science has it all figured out. But the tide goes in, the tide goes out. Nobody knows how it happened. <laughs> They'll also tell you that the world's heating up. But this morning I walked outside of my house and it was fucking snowing! <laughs> Starring Gilbert Gottfried as Senator James Inhofe. Okay! <laughs> What's this?
to deal with this whole global warm. The whole idea is crazy. Like, I, if God is up there, and he is, if he wants it to be cold, it'll be cold. He wants us all to go by swimming pools and have an endless summer. I, I, I love swimming. I love summer, so suck it. Anyway, I have not seen a single report come across my desk that says anything about the global, the whole idea is fracking ridiculous. <laughs> yes, I said fracking. Starring Terrence Howard as Al Gore. <laughs> hey, Mike. <laughs> hey, Ann Hall, Mike. Hey, Ann and Mike. What's this bullshit right here, man? Hey, bitch. This is my report on global warming. <laughs> Tell me this shit just fell out your pocket, motherfucker. <laughs> Tell me that my report on global warming ending up in the toilet is just another inconvenient truth. <laughs> <laughs> With Donald Trump as Donald Trump. <laughs> Listen up, look, nobody understands climate change like me, okay? Nobody. <laughs> I've got a great idea, I've got a great system. This is what we're gonna do. The scientists love me. The scientists love me. <laughs> this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go down to Antarctica. I hear they've got a lot of cold air down there, okay? This is what I'm hearing. I hear they've got a lot of cold air. We're gonna gather up some of that cold air and then we're gonna comb it up over the rest of the world. <laughs> it's gonna be huge. It's gonna be huge. Starring Robert De Niro and Michael Douglas as the Koch brothers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, you know a lot of people are gonna tell you that my brother and I are a couple of greedy businessmen just out to harm the environment to turn a profit. Well, let's not forget the immortal words of Gordon Gecko. When I say to you that for all intents and purposes, greed is good. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Greed's good. Greed is good. No, 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 yes it is. Huh? A little bit. A little bit, greed is good. I'm good. He's good. We're good. <laughs> if you don't believe me, you're gonna end up at the back of my fucking trunk, huh? It's an SUV, you're part of the problem, huh? Starring Charlie Sheen. Hi, look, I'm uh, Charlie Sheen, but uh, actually I'm not even in this movie. I just heard someone say Coke Brothers, so I came running. <laughs> Apparently had the wrong idea. <laughs> Starring Bruce Willis as head of science, Ted Cruz. <laughs> Listen up, everyone. <laughs> I read the report. <laughs> Global warming's real, pal. <laughs> There's only one way to stop it. <laughs> we gotta arm everyone in America. Blast a hole in those greenhouse gases. <laughs> Yippee ki yay, motherfucker. <laughs> Starring Keanu Reeves and Owen Wilson. <laughs> well, <laughs> I am an astronaut. And there is only one way we can solve this problem. We have to put everybody onto a rocket ship and go and colonize Mars. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's really cool, man. What a great fucking plan. It's awesome, amigo. Except for one problem, man. It'll never work. You've gone loco, essay. Well, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Come on.
colonize Mars. Well, that plan sounds interstellar. <laughs> you know the greatest thing about space travel? Everybody else gets older. I stay the same age. <laughs> Get the hell out of here, McConaughey. You're not even in this movie. <laughs> but I, I should be. <laughs> I should be in every movie. Starring Cat Williams as head of the EPA. <laughs> Mr. President, we have got to do something about this global warming bullshit. Motherfucker, we got to put in our star player, motherfucker. We got to get ourselves a Neil deGrasse Tyson. Where the fuck is Neil? <laughs> Look, we'd love to get Neil Tyson. Unfortunately, America's lack of science understanding has made Neil go insane. He now lives on the streets and thinks he's Gary Busey. <laughs> all right, how you doing? How you doing? Uh, Neil the Busey Tyson, all right, good to meet you. All right, look, you want to you solve this problem, right? Here's what you got to do. Uh, you got to look at the word. Climate. C-L-I-M-A-T-E. Can't live in massively aggravated temperature environment. <laughs> Climbing. Fucking boom. <laughs> oh, all right. And for no other reason other than he's in every bad impression bit and every good movie. Christopher Walken as the right wing climate scientist. You know, it's crazy, you know, I'm saying, oh, the world's heating up. Oh, the global warming, whatever. It's bullshit. It's crazy. You know, I've done the research. You know, I tell you, you know, the, the polar ice caps are melting. It's not true. What's happening is that we, as a society, I'm just enjoying more drinks on the rocks these days. <laughs> That's where the ice is going. Oh, the drinks. So next time, you know, someone says to you, hey, it's hot. And you say to them, cheers. Get in your Hummer and drive as fast as you can to see climate denial. Not only is it not a river in Egypt, but there is no longer a river in Egypt. <laughs> hey, you guys, thank you very much. You've been extraordinary, incredible, and unbelievable. Thank you guys very much. Good night. Seriously, thank you guys so much for coming out. Really appreciate it, Santa Cruz. Love you guys. Good night. I think when we are working to bring science and reason into the mainstream, we absolutely have to couch it in entertainment and storytelling. It won't translate to people unless it resonates with them, and nothing resonates like a really good story. Why fight it? Global warming is a mountainous debate, and some don't want to climb it. But can we try first? I mean, we don't need the titanic discussion, just touch the tip of the iceberg. When it comes to government policy in science, I think that's an important thing. I think we need to stick with actual scientists. A factual confession. I got intelligence designed by natural selection. I know I'm speaking in vain. Creationism is the origin of specious claims. I remember Richard Dawkins and I were in, in, I think it was when we were in Sydney at the Opera House, someone asked a question and said, you know, how do you get more people to follow you? And we said, we don't want people to follow us. We want people to think for themselves. So all I want to do is encourage people to think about the world and be excited by it. I'm not trying to put anything down. 
The point is the world is really fascinating without all the garbage. So get rid of the garbage and enjoy the real world. Is this a hoax or what? You weren't abducted, so to shut it. Not even doctors want to probe your butt with a searchlight. Is this a crappy alien story or close encounter of the turd kind? My job is to share with everybody whatever I've got. You know, if, I, if it's time to make a joke, you make a joke. Time to do a trick, you do a trick. If you've got a piece of information on thinking that's been helpful to you, you, you pass that on too. Uh, there's a line by Bob Dylan, you know, fearing not I become my enemy in the instant that I preached. It's from my back pages. One of the most important lines Bob wrote, and Bob wrote a lot of important lines. Man, I'm hardly an era, scared to be your parent in the Jenny McCarthy an era. You can't believe or not, anti-vaxxers don't like needles, but they'll give measles a shot. And I think about this with my dad because, you know, um, people will say to me, um, you know, he changed my life or he changed my thinking or something like that. And I used to think like, yeah, he's like out to change the world. And then I would like hear him talk in interviews and he would say like, no, my number one job is to be a comedian and make people laugh. Extra, extra, read all about it. Can you believe it or do you doubt it? Extra, extra, read all about it. Can you believe it or do you doubt it? I like to be challenged. I like to have my assumptions questioned. I like to learn new things and hear new perspectives. So that's actually what I find most enjoyable in life. And that's all I'm trying to share with everybody else. Extra, extra, read all about it. Can you believe it? Or do you doubt it? Extra, extra, read all about it. Can you believe it? Or do you doubt it? So you don't want to berate that person as if they're zombies. And I've seen atheists do this. Treat people as if they could never be cured, you know? But Christianity doesn't have to be the debilitating chronic condition that it used to be. With treatment, you can make a full recovery. <laughs> I have to wonder, does it make me a prick if I wanted this acupuncture? <laughs> like the facts matter, I can never trust an acupuncturist. They're all backstabbers. We'll be judged by how we treat people when we have power, and I'm trying to gear up for that. I want to make sure that the crazy religious people are treated as well as the crazy religious people treated the crazy atheists a while ago, which is pretty well. I don't like when they say, well, who's to say there could be an intelligence out there who understands everything we do and is, cares about our personal lives. You don't know that. I mean, science is so filled with surprises. That could be one of them. I hate that, qu I hate that comment because, first of all, it's true. That is a true statement. We don't know if that's the case. It's so unlikely to be the case. It's so fantastically unlikely to be the case that even to consider that it could be the case is ridiculous. Uh, yeah, I'm very comfortable saying I don't know shit. I'm very comfortable saying that. I think if you can't start at that place, we're doomed. But, um, uh, you know, it's, it, there is a certain science literacy that was presumed for a long time that seems to no longer be the case. Extra, extra, read all about it. Can you believe it? Or do you doubt it? Extra, extra. Ian Harris, what can I say? He's extraordinary. Or do you doubt it? One more? No.